Lord, we worship one another. God. God. We worship one another. God, spiritual. And and the other way, because we want to understand boredom versus legal yeah. matter. Uh -huh. Let's start back again. Jeremiah three and first verse. Uh -huh. They say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Uh -huh. Shall not the land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, mm -hmm. yet returned again to me, said the Lord. So the Most High say everybody doing something. He say, but look, he say this this a mystery. This ain't for every man. Somebody probably can't handle that. But see, this is what he's saying. If you go to a man, they come back to me. Oh, so the grass wasn't as green on the other side as you thought. Now you're back here. Right, you went and chose another God. You right. Played the heart. Right. So now you're back here again. Would that land be greatly polluted? But the most high say, I told you, you come back to me under these certain times. We're going to get some things straight here. Yeah. You know, so y'all, but but he leaves the door where it says, this, every man can't take this. Some men can't deal with that. Right. Right. It may be the individual who, who that land was polluted by. You can't accept that. So he's saying, look, if you can't deal with it, cut it off versus you're going to be always bringing this up in the marriage. It ain't going to be no peace then. <clears throat> hey, how you like my, my, that's the first time I tried that recipe. How you like that? Uh, damn, if I say no, she's going to be mad. And she's going to be mad. <laughs> that last week, if I say yeah, then I'm going to be eating this and I can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> this tastes like a wood sandwich. <laughs> so you go ahead, sis. What you got? I'm kind of confused. So it's saying, so if the man leaves the woman and then she go and marry somebody else, right? Can she come back to her original husband? Right. It's saying no. It's saying the land will, it will not the land be greatly polluted. What what it's saying is that if you you could have then if you back with him, then the problems y'all had weren't really that bad. There was another objective there. If you come back to him, if you left him. If he, if, if, they, if that was put, a writing of divorce, he put her um, away, though, right? Huh? She, he put her away, so that means he left her, right? Right. Well, it, it depends on she can leave him too, but everything is from the man's perspective because he was supposed to give up the writing of divorce. So if he put her away and she go with somebody and come back, the land will be great and fluid. Yes, it's from a man's perspective, but because the order of marriage, the woman should never really be the one that, that files because that's really out of order. Like, we can't divorce the most high. You can go away and be somebody else, but the man has to do the divorce, and that's the way it's really written. The man is supposed to be the one to say, well, okay, he has to give the writing because he's the man in the marriage, so he has to be the one that gives the paperwork. But if it comes down the other way, it's not saying that other way is bad, but it's saying this is the order of the way. Go ahead, man. Deuteronomy 24, uh -huh. verses 1 through 4. Uh -huh. ask, ask it for you, sister. It says, uh, verse 1. Say it again, Deuteronomy 24, 24, verses 1 through 4. Uh -huh. The law of divorce. It says, when a man have taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no faith in his eyes, uh -huh. because he had found some uncleanness in her. Right. Then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. Right. And when she is deported out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. Right. So and if, go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. And if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. Or if the latter husband died, which took her to be his wife, uh -huh. her former or first husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. Right. After that she is defiled, for that is abomination before the Most High. And thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Most High thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. And see, what I'm saying just was reverse. It was, it was the man in position. He found some uncleanness in him. So he said, and then she go get with somebody else, and then he take her back. It's on either him or her. You know, where if you, why did you write it out the first time? Taking it back to the but, but he could have wrote it out, you know what I'm saying? If he finds some uncleanness, he just, why are you now back? So you could have dealt with that uncleanness back then, but you chose not to, you know. So now, but he could have set that uncleanness up. People set or do set traps for their spouse so they can do things, wicked things. 
I'm going to send Rico Suave and a couple of them. Morris Chestnuts and some around here and they're going to have roses just to see if she's going to break. <laughs> and most I reveal all that. that People wicked. do that type of wicked but, thing. But, uh, this verse 4 again. It says, her former husband, right. which sent her away, may not take her again right. to be his wife after that she is defiled. Because, for that is abomination before the Lord. Right. And thou shalt not cause the land to sin which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Right. So it's kind of tied around that because it's saying everything you should be able to wait it out if you can. But if you get to the point where you have to cut it off, why now are you going to double back? When y'all hear the terms of somebody, they say they're getting remarried again. It usually don't last. It's shorter than the first time. Because the same issues coming back up, but they're going to be worse. Because you know what's going to be for us. So, but the one that you read, the Rodney was saying, um, so if she does, so she can get remarried to another man. Yes. But if he dies or puts her away, then she, that's the end for that one? She can't go back to her first. She can't go back to her first. So, so she can go on to, yeah. on to somebody on. else. Yeah. Okay. And then you can find that in Romans 7. Yeah, Romans 7 and 3. A woman is bound to the law of her husband as long as he's alive. If he's dead, she's not bound. Right. As long as he's alive and there's a contract. Yeah. See, there still has to be a contract. She's not bound if the contract has been broken. But see, what we get in, we, we separate. You separate, you got a new boyfriend, he got a new girlfriend. But guess what the courts got? Y'all still mad. So, yes, she's still bound by that law because there's still a legal marriage certificate. There's been no writing of divorce given in her hand. Once the writing is, you can go and be married to somebody else, whether he's alive or dead. Because we see in this, it said, it didn't matter which way he was, dead or alive, she still can't come back. So, this is what we got to do. What you got, bro? Speak, speak up a little bit, Zay. Okay, so that would mean that you can man or one of us can just go out and sleep with a woman, walk all of wife, wifey, whatever you want to do, and just leave her. Just like no, her no, her no you can't. Well, you can't with no contract. I'm you, saying, right. well, I know the, the law, right. but this is opposite from this boyfriend dating thing. No, absolutely. Boyfriend. Absolutely. Right. I can't just go and say, hey, I don't like you this week. Now you have a count. You have a count. Right. 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 I need to give her a writ of divorce. You have to. Right? You have to. Yeah. I need to give her that or I'm talking her to see. Yes, you are. And the man she made. Right. 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 Now you know, that man she's you. you. I'm like, I'm trying to see. Right. I need to stand in the thing. Four and on the rack. Right. Go on record with me. I'm just going to let that be known. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Right. Y'all, let's hit this. Y'all run a little bit behind. Look at Jeremiah 3. Hit a little bit more of that because it's going to tell us who they played the harlot with. The Arabian. Worshiping their gods. Most I call the spiritual harlots. That's right. right. Jeremiah See? chapter 3. Verse, Verse 2. Verse 2. Right. Lift up thy eyes into the high places. Uh huh. And see what thou hast been lean with. Not been lean with. Have not been lean with. In the ways hast thou set for them as the Arabian in the wilderness. And thou hast polluted the land with the hordes and with thy wickedness. Uh -huh. Therefore the showers have been withholding, and there has been no matter rain. And thou hast a horse forehead. Uh -huh. Thou refuses to be ashamed. See, and a whore's forehead is mean you refuse to be ashamed. And when you when you you hear a lot of down here, we say, once you lose your shame, it's it's pretty rough on you at that point. If you lose your shame, you have a reprobate mind. That means if, if nothing can shame you, you have a whore's forehead. That means you are standing on a bus stop at 12 noon in front of a children's library with just a phone on. You have a horse forehead. You don't care. You have no shame. So y'all, we want to understand that when you get that, if you, 
You, and that's what refusing the truth of the Lord wants you to make the covenant with. If you don't like what the Lord is saying, find another, uh, another doctrine. But you can't be with this and say, well, you know, the Lord, that was back then in them days. He said, I'm the same yesterday as I was today. Ain't nothing changed with my process. <clears throat> nothing changed. You the change. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 1. Who got it? Everybody there? No. Let's get it. 16 and 1 of Ezekiel. Anybody Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abomination. What is he causing them to do? To know her abomination. Right. And say, Thus said the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Uh -huh. For thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother a Hittite. And as for thy nativity, in the day thou was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in the waters to suckle thee. So basically it's saying that your beginning was owned by other nations. Like Jerusalem was owned by the Canaanites. That land is still who it was. From Ham has always been the father of that land has been somebody else. Jerusalem to this day is called the land of Canaan until it turns over to us. Always been that and ain't changed yet. So it's saying your nativity, your early upbringing, or your, your basic foundation where uh, your beginning is, your nativity is, is found in, in being run. You, you're in the land of somebody else, really, but I promised I was going to give you that land. He never said, I'm going to give you that land and name it after. He said, I'm going to give you the land of Cain, didn't he? Who was Cain? Who was Cain? The fourth son of Ham. He's the fourth son of Ham. So it's saying Cain and thy father was a curse. You know, it was a land of curse, but they owned it out right out of the river. Curse. Not a color curse. Not a color curse, right. Right, right. That was our nativity. That's where our law came forth in the beginning from Jerusalem, who the land belongs to the Canaanites. The beginning of it. So just like we say we ain't never from Africa, and we say that because we don't want our nativity to be there, but we are from so-called the land of Africa because right. Israel is northeast. Is that the land of Africa? Right. 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 That's what it is. That's where your nativity is. But are we that people? No. 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 Also, not him. You, you show there when he said it that uh, uh, not in that neighborhood not cut. You mean you, you're still attached to your umbilical cord. Right. And, and he's saying, you know, as you read through this, this is why I ask everybody to read through this, it's like the Lord has told us this is how I found you. Right. In the wilderness, right. your mother birthed you out and she died. Right. And you were still attached to her. Right. I found you like that. Right. He's saying that to his people. Right. This is where you come from and this is how I found detached. you. Detached. Like Abraham was found detached. Get away from there and come to the land. Detached. I'm going to show you that belongs really. I'm going to give you this land of these other right. people. These, okay. these, these people shouldn't be in this land. Jerusalem is the holy spot. It's called the navel of the world. When you look at the center, Jerusalem is the center of the world and, and uh, it's dead center of the world. It's called the navel of the world. And this is what he's saying. Your nativity was in the navel of the world. That's the beginning, but this land actually belongs to the Canaanites. And so I'll give it to y'all. I'm going to change the name of that land. I'm going to change the glory of that land. See, and that's how we know that, 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 that they can't be Jews because that name ain't been changed. It's still called Land of Canaan now, ain't it? Yeah. Still, that name ain't changed. Let's get it. Verse 4. Uh -huh. And as for thy nativity, right. in the day that thou was born, thy navel was not cut, mm. neither was thou washed in the water to suckle thee. Right. Thou, thou was not salted at all, nor swallowed at all. So mm. it's saying this is the birthing process. That's what you do when things are birthed. You are uh, uh, you, you suckle thee, and that's that's breastfeeding, and, and they were salted, getting all that, getting all of that placenta off of you, and then they swallow you up, put you on baby clothes, a onesie, a onesie, 
situation being this ain't our this is what we were birthed at it's almost a mirror image of the last birth and nativity in a land that he has to pull us from and give us the land of, of the beginning of them that's why he named them first Canaan and the Amorites and the mother of the Hittites and these descendants because America is the mirror image of Canaan and the land of Canaan with the uh, sex crimes that they uh, that they allowed to go on even though they have and the nativity, the truth of Jerusalem is coming out of there. But right now, those who run Jerusalem say it's okay for these sex crimes to take place in the Holy Land. Mm, right. They lead in the world in homosexual, in homosexual teachings. They have the largest homosexual parade in Jerusalem right now. They are now called the top nation of uh, promoting homosexuality yep. in the Holy Land. So they have the biggest gay parade on the planet. So God returns people home to have gay parades? No. Right. Let's get it. Verse 5. Please get yeah, chapter, I mean Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 5. None I pity thee uh -huh. to do any of these unto thee. Right. To have compassion upon thee. Right. And thou wast cast out in the open field. To the loathing of thy loathing, uh -huh. to the loathing of thy person, in the day that thou was born. Uh -huh. And when I passed by thee, I saw thee polluted in thy own blood. Uh -huh. And I saw unto thee when I thou said, um, thank you. I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. Uh -huh. Yeah, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. Uh -huh. well, uh huh. It's sure, like you said, he walking around, and this is how he found us from the very beginning, just like this. Right. And he's letting us know. That's why I keep saying, read the whole chapter. Right. We're gonna read the whole chapter. That's why we're in. We're gonna read the whole chapter. What we're saying is, there may be a wrinkle or spot in somebody. Ain't nobody gonna be perfect. There's always gonna be something that you can <laughs> complain about. Ain't nobody perfect down here. You know, there's always something that somebody gonna be shortcoming on. Yeah. So sure. you ain't gonna never find the perfect woman or the perfect man. Right. Somebody will be short. Don't or exist. Or be right. this. Huh? Or be this. Oh, right. Exist. You know, you can strive for perfection. <laughs> but it's always gonna be some short for somebody. You gonna have to accept them things if you can live with that. You know, but it cannot be the thing that it displeases you or prevents you from keeping the word of God. Little small things, that ain't nothing. You know, right. be sincere. Be sincere about it. Ain't no uh, <laughs> right. The junior high little kid love. Love. You no. Know, you say earlier, uh, yeah. they like me yes or Check no. no. Check yeah. no. Yeah. And I don't want to deal with you no more. That's junior high type. No. That ain't what the Lord talking about. Be. Let's get it, y'all. Because we run out of time. I definitely won't get it First Corinthians 7. Go ahead. I have called thee uh -huh. to multiply right. as the buds of the field. Right. And thou hast increased and waxed and great. Right. And thou art come to excellent ornaments. Right. Thy breasts are fashioned. Right. Thine hair is grown. Right. Whereas thou wast naked and burnt. So what parts of the body do you think just talking about? See, this is getting grown. This is where it's saying you don't reach your full potential for marriage. Yeah. She's a woman. You know, not a little girl. Beautiful. If you, marry, if you marry a little girl, then expect to get little girl tantrums or whatever. But when you marry a woman, you marry a woman ready for wifehood. She's ready for motherhood because it said, verse 7, I call these the brothers here, they say, and waxing, and thou art come to excellent ornaments. I mean, you full grown now. Thy breasts are fat. Yeah. You know, you out of the train. Thine hair is grown. Right. You out of the train. And thine hair is grown. South of the belly button. Ah, here you go. Come on. Let's get it. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. Now, when I pass by thee and look upon thee, behold, thou was the. Die. Oh, oh. Now, when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. Mm. Right. And I was spread, and I 
spread my skirt over thee uh -huh. and cover thy nakedness. See right here, he now he's uh her husband. Now you you up to par now. Now I gotta spread my covering over you because you're a full grown woman now. <coughs> Your breasts where they need to be, everything is intact, and I have to cover you with my skirt because you belong to me now. I got to cover up them parts. Right. Thank That's you. what it says in, in, in Leviticus 18, Deuteronomy 27 and 20, all of the ones about he that go into his father's skirt is the same thing. Cursed be the man that uncovered his father's skirt. That's his woman or his garment. So this is what it's getting into. You a full grown woman, I, I need you mine. I'm covering you up. You are not a little child that where somebody can look and say, look at that cradle rock. That pedophile. Yeah. All of that. And y'all, don't go look at that movie. But I'm just saying, you'll see that verse 7, she is not up to par. But don't go look. And I'm just saying that because you get locked up for looking. And they find it on your computer that you've been looking. Mm. Or King Porn. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. They don't go for that. So and that's what I'm saying. They will lock you up. They will throw away the key. You they'll have to pump sunlight into you. They don't play. It. No. I didn't have that in my house. Oh. Oh. Let's get it. Yeah. I swore unto thee uh -huh. and entered into a covenant with thee. What he do? Enter into a covenant with thee. Right. Said the Lord God, and thou became his mind. So he nurtured us. He let us become up to full grown men and women before he made the covenant with us. We were full grown. And so what that means is you were full well in your mindset what you were agreeing to. Right? See, the only way you can get married now that, how long, what's the age of marriage here? 18, 21? 18. Before that, who you got to get the sign for? Parents. Your parents. But see, he's saying you're full grown, you're able to agree to the contract. This is not forced marriage. Your mother ain't telling you, go marry. Look. Nah. Because he got that gimpy foot and that biggie eye. Don't worry about none of that. You got some money. <laughs> You can't, they can't be forced. She has to feel her love for him, just like you feel her love for him. Well, Let's get it. Well, then, an example of force, though, right there with, uh, with uh, Jacob and, and his father mom. Those were not forced. That was a little trickery. That was returned for Jacob's trickery. Let's get it. Verse 9. Then watched I thee with water. What he do? Then I washed it with water. We just read that in Ephesians 5, 22. It ain't sanctified till it's washed with water by the word. This is what Christ said. I want. Then I wash y'all. This is the pattern that y'all need to take. Let's get some more. Yeah. Uh huh. I thoroughly washed away the blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. Right. I clothed thee also with broidered work, uh -huh. and shod thee with. Bad, badger skin, uh -huh. and I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. So we have to understand here, because you may have on some shoes of, of an animal that's on the unclean list, that don't mean you're unclean. He, most high tell you, he said, this is how I decked you out. I'm dead. I put you in them gates. <laughs> I put that on you. Now, there ain't no reason why we like to dress, but this is just what the most I say. I shod you because the Ark of the Covenant is covered with what? Badges. Badger skin. That's on the list of do not eat badges. It's a creature. So what he covered it up is used for its purpose. Just like everything the, the most high created, he created it for good. He created the pig to eat all the trash up. He created the shrimp to eat all of the unclean stuff on the bottom of the ocean so that your tilapia and your uh, 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 cod and your buffalo will be clean because this trash compactor is cleaning all of that mess up for them so that they don't eat the filthy stuff. That's what I designed them for. They are good. So in like manner, let's get some more. I deck thee also with ointment. What he deck us with? Ointment. Uh -huh. And I put braces upon thy hand. Right. And the chain on that neck. So we'll see the same thing when uh, Abraham sent Eleazar to go get Rebecca for Isaac. First thing he did to her, he said, look, I'm back to his kindred. And the angel said, look, if they don't agree to it, so it was still to the mother and father, they could have said, uh-uh, we don't want her to marry Isaac. 
No, that boy got problems. I heard it had been put on the altar already once. We don't want our daughter around here. But she was delighted. And she came back. But the first thing he do, he said, look, he ain't coming just for this. You know, he's going to take care of you and hear the gifts he sent. Don't have to be a ring because we see he gave her 10 shekels earrings. And the bracelets weighed so many shekels. So she's seeing this, she like, well, okay. Yeah, I like this. Who is this man? This Isaac, a keeper of the Lord's covenant. First thing we need to know, before you get comfortable in all of this, do you believe in the Lord our God? Right. And she right. said, yeah, I'm down with that. So she rolled on back with him. As soon as she seen him, who is this? That is, that's him. She leaped off her off heart. Off but she covered herself up first. And ran to him and gave him obedience. Hey, I'm here. I know the rules. I already agreed to him. Your servant had told me all the way what the deal is. I'm, I'm down with all that. And once he found out that she was down, he took her into, her into his mother's tent to keep her because they couldn't get married yet. And she didn't have no people. That don't mean she was in the house with them. She didn't have no people in that land. He went and got her from her peeps and brought her here. So naturally, he put her in the tent of his mother. And he's in the tent where he's supposed to be. He's still a grown man, but he's still under his father's house until he leave and get his own wife. Move out. Move out. Right. Right. She was, he took her to her mother's tent, into her room. She was watching. What you want, Isaac? Oh, no, I was just coming by to ask you. Come up. What you say you want? No. No. Right. You know, <laughs> he coming in here looking after midnight. Well, that's why he took her right back to her mother tent until he got married to her. Then she went to his tent. Let's read a little bit more of this. And okay. I, twelve. Uh huh. And I put a jewel on thy forehead. Uh huh. And an earring in thine ear. Right. And a beautiful crown upon thy head. Right. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver. And thy raiment was of neck fine linen uh -huh. and silk and broidered work. Right. And this eat fine flour and honey and oil. And thou was exceeding beautiful. And thou didst prosper into a king. But first, before he did all of that, he taught her the word of God because right. she could get all of those things she have without. That's, that, that's the nurse. It's spiritual. That's the nurse. He said, this is what I done decked you out with first. All it embraces the thing was spiritual. He was telling her how I'm going to build you up in the word of law. And all this going to come. This going to come. This is automatic. But first, we got. I got to get you richly. And that's when, the, when Paul tells him, seek another man's wealth. You know, you, you want to see him wealthy with the word. That's what you want to see everybody wealthy in spirit. Because you're wealthy on the outside, you could be just a mean ruler, calling shots, because you got paper, ordering hits, because you got paper, taking bribes, because you got paper. No, the most high say all of this decking was spiritual first. Then it teaches you how to deck corners. You don't overdeck. You don't go and get these jewels with the red money. Can't do it. Let's get it. Verse 14. Uh -huh. And thy Rion went forth. Renown. Thank you, Hebrew. Uh -huh. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. For it was perfect. Though my comeliness, which I had put upon thee, said the Lord God. Now, this is going to mirror Proverbs 31 of, of the uh, virtuous woman. It's going gonna, it's gonna to mirror this to the letter of what this woman has become when she's had the spiritual gifts of the Lord offered to her first. We don't offer the spiritual gifts of the Lord. Do we? First thing we want to offer is a rod of correction. Literally. For children's sake. Go ahead. But thou didst trust in thy own beauty. What we do? Trust in our own beauty. Right. And place the holy right. because of thy renown. Right. And proudest pours. pours out the fornications of out thy fornications on everyone that passed by. His it was. So Ooh. right here, this is telling us what Israel did. Ain't nobody made he us is it nothing. Was. Right. See, we poured out these waters. We told these other nations. We like y'all. Right. Right. Look, we're flirting with you. Just give these home for the sun. Yeah, it's it. Everyone that passed by. Everyone that he passed He is by. it was. That's right. So we that see that we uncovered our nakedness. The most high didn't do it. Nobody didn't make us uncover. They didn't rape us. 
We showed them the goodies. Right. Let's get some more. And of thy garments thou did take. Right. And did thy high places and divers colors. Right. And placed the heart of their upon. Right. The light things shall not come, neither shall it be so. Thou hast also taken the fair jewels of my gold uh -huh. and my silver, which I had given thee, uh -huh. and made it to thyself images of men, what? and uh -huh. didst commit whoredom with them. So right here we see images we're all of the course of spiritual marriage. Now we're into whoredom. Dealing with other gods. Other gods. Spiritually first, which is then going to then introduce you to their priestesses. Men, this is what they do in universities. If your mind, if you don't have the covenant of the Lord, when you go off to these universities, first thing they do is offer you your, their priestess. Yeah, the that's working for the university. Yeah. Three of them. You go hand in hand, ready for dilly dallies. <laughs> have become a hall and left what you were taught. And when you get through dilly dallying, they put the contract in front of you. Willie Jackson has now signed with Baylor University. You're like, oh, Baylor, I thought he was going to USC. No, USC didn't have the same priestesses. <laughs> they didn't do the same things. They know what to do to get you to sign the contract. And this is where you will always see boredom and this to temple prostitutes. More than not, it's concerning what the most high is talking about. He's talking about spiritual order. Temple prostitutes there to give you your pleasure for serving their God. That's the reward. As soon as we came out of Egypt and we made the golden calf, what's the next thing we was doing? Orgy. Made us naked. This is what they did here. They got Yeah. Yes, sir. Having a Solomon for your pleasure. First Kings 8 chapter, but Solomon 11 chapter. Solomon loved many strange women. Those are the daughters of Molech, this and that, and they caused Solomon's heart to turn. But they waited until he got old. Send them young tenders on. <laughs> All manners of techniques that Solomon couldn't have. And he allowed them to bring their wickedness into what God had his name established over. And they promoted their gods from within the temple of God. Absolutely. Because he violated a couple of commandments. He was not obedient like he should have been. Who, Solomon? Why was he on the earth? I don't know. He said, why is this man on earth? This tells you, y'all, that ain't nobody above nobody. Now, this man was so wise that he asked, see, and this is what we talked about, your riches decking you silver. The most I say, I'm going to give you all of that gold stuff. But you accepted my riches first. You said, just teach me how to deal with Israel. Give me that wisdom because I ain't gonna never have to worry about getting paper as long as I got this wisdom here. Paper come, but I got to get this wisdom first. And then he said, "Well, I'm giving you all that because you got this down. You understand this." Solomon understood, but there was something that Solomon, even though in all of his getting and his understanding, what came back to harm him, what he was the chief of women, seven hundred wives, three hundred concubines. And 300 concubines. He would not have to see the same woman, the same three. He wouldn't, January the 1st, he would see these three. He wouldn't see them three again to January the 1st again. There were that many women. One thousand, 365 days a year, or a thousand divided by three. That's about how many times he saw each one. Did it cause him to lose the king? Because he had the king split. Do benevolence in his doctrine. He said, enough milk for all that man. He had to take care of all of them. No. And they didn't even, you know what I'm saying, convert and worship our God. They no. still worshiping their God. So he over there building the temple. Oh, that way. But, uh, but he, all he, he said it was all vanity. He knew it was all vanity when he got through. Because all of them Viagra smoothies, it still didn't help him out. <laughs> <laughs> because 700 wives, you can be Let's get it straight. The Bible is strict on 
sex with crimes. One of the form, he ended up healed. Let's get it. <laughs> Mandrakes was around. In the Songs of Solomon, when he talking about court, he said you can smell it in the earth. He said it was an aphrodisiac. It helped, it helped Rebecca, I mean uh, Rachel, have a child. Mandrake. And the only time it's ever mentioned is as an aphrodisiac. Which is a sexual stimulant. That's right. What is a mandrake? It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's from the nightshade. It's from the nightshade family. It has four roots, and they say it looks like a man, but on the top, it looks like what you may slip a twenty. And then in Genesis thirty, right? When, when, uh, say that again. The leaves look like what you may slip a twenty for. <laughs> this part of it, this part of it, could cause death. They say when you used to pull it out of the ground, it's almost like say you could hear it, but it's an old wise tale. You could hear it hollering or whatever. But this part of it was used for that. And it says when you look it up, it's cathartic and so for real. Meaning it does the awareness and puts you in tunnel vision that what you're thinking about, the only thing on your mind is the subject at hand. Just like that other that causes short-term memory, or if you on one point and you get thrown off. You ain't coming back to that point that somebody helped you out. But some of y'all may not know about that. I'm not telling you they'll find that out. Some of y'all may not know about short term memory. So they ate it or they smoked it? I don't know how they did it, and I would be just guessing. But they say if you can smell it in the air, it was thick in the air. So I don't know what's, what that means. What to say now? Mandrake. Mandrake, a uh -huh. member of the potato family, right? right? The mandrake is also called love apple. What is it called? <laughs> love apple. Love apple. Love apple. Oh, Go ahead. The, ap the apples, although insipid tasting and slightly poisonous, are much desired as an edible fruit. Uh -huh. The mandrake root is large, sometimes resembling the human body in shape. Right. Yeah. It was used as a charm against the evil spirits. And as indicated by the story of Rachel and Leah, right. was credited with aphrodisiac quality. Aphrodisiac. Y'all know what aphrodisiac is? Genesis 30, uh, verses 14 through 16. Y'all know what aphrodisiac is? That getting in the mood potion. Getting in the mood potion. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We say, bro. We only got a few minutes left. What you say, bro? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what you got? Absolutely. That's what in the 12 tribes of Israel, that was Judah's a connection to his problem. <laughs> Wine and women. When these Arabs come over here, that's the first thing they do. Open up a liquor store, put mandrake material in there, and all the hot sheet joint two blocks down. <laughs> so you stop here, get everything you need, and go there. They know what they do. That's why they in our neighborhood. Yeah, they just like and when you look behind what's in that counter, you don't see them things out in Chesterfield behind their counter. Right. You don't see grinders and screens and They even goes into the one of the two years. It's like among you. That's right. It rises above you. Let's get some more of this, y'all. We're we'll run out of time. We're going to get these letters to Corinthians 7 in. Go ahead. Where we at? Verse 18. Uh -huh. And took his down broader garments. We're just going down to verse 29 on this, y'all. What verse you on? 18. He's on verse 18. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 18. Go ahead, bro. And took us thou broader garments, uh -huh. and covered them. And thou hast set my oil and my incense before them. My meat also, which I gave thee, fine flour and oil uh -huh. and honey, wherewith I fed thee, thou hast even set it before them for a sweet sake. Mm. And thus it was. Said the Lord God. So we just did, we just was out of control. And this is why the world looks at us. And this is why you wonder why they hate us like they do. Y'all got the covenant and that's the way y'all act. Mm -hmm. Y'all want the gods that we serve. Mm -hmm. Which is wood and stone. Yeah. And y'all got the king of the universe. Yeah. Oh, y'all, y'all, okay. Just keep on giving us what we need to know to get close to them. Because y'all going to get moved out of the place. And then we're going to take over. Keep breaking this commandment. We forever have power over. That's right. Go ahead. Moreover, uh -huh. thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, uh -huh. whom thou hast born unto me. Because we give all the firstborn to the Lord. 
That's in the covenant, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And them hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Molech. Come on now. Leviticus 18. Is Go this ahead. of thy whoredom a small matter? See, and this is what it said. Is this a small matter? Come on, no. Lord. Ah, it wasn't nothing but Molech. It's the same thing for us preaching about Christmas. Come on. It's just a, it's, it's a lie. It's just, but it's for the kids. For the kids. But it's a lie. When you get down to it, you still gonna have to admit when they get older that I lied to you. Right. Ain't no Santa Claus. Right. right. Well, you how you think he got in? The ball is on the door, on the window. How you get up in there? Ain't no chimney. <laughs> Let's get some more. That thou hast slain my children uh -huh. and delivered them to cause them to pause. Pass through the fire for them. So this is straight up more like we were just even to this point. Just out of control. Go ahead. And all thy abominations and thy horror. Uh -huh. Thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth. Mm -hmm. When thou was a when thou was naked and burnt uh -huh. and was polluted in thy blood. See, he said, you don't even go back to the first flower. You know, when your flower, when you came into and, and that's a pollution process because once a woman reach a flower, she has to do Leviticus 15. You know, and that's the law of washing, making yourself clean, and so does a man. Whenever any admission comes from him, he's unclean till the evening. So the Most High ain't going to even allow you to get in multiple altercations in the bedroom. Because you unclean until you the evening. Until the evening. So if you were, you're only going to do one a day. You ain't going to be doubling and tripling up. You ain't going to have time for nothing else in it. You're going to be tired and brought to your bed to go to work. Ooh. I can barely get up and get in the water. No, you got too much of this going on. <laughs> Let's get it on. Book <laughs> Get up. We have to be real down here, y'all. We can't take the fuck, y'all. This book is real. It's dealing with everything in our life so that we can never say the Lord just don't understand. He didn't understand 2012. Y'all hear that every day. The Lord understands 2012 because the only thing that's changed is technology. We the same exact people, we do the same exact thing. They had houses then, and they got the same houses now. They had them women then that was following them customs, and we got the same women. They had men that did this, that they all not did, and we got them same men here today. Ain't nothing changed but technology. Yeah, that's one and nine. Let's get it. Absolutely. Where we at? 23. Uh-huh. And it came to pass after all thy wickedness. After all thy what? Wickedness. Uh-huh. Woe. Woe oh. unto thee, said the Lord God. Right. That thou hast also built unto thee an enmity place. Eminent. 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 Thank you. Eminent place. Uh-huh. And has made thee a high place in every street. Now understand yeah. this. The Ooh. men are at the head of this spiritual war. Women, if you look at that and say, okay, they read that about us, they're attacking us, and you don't look at it at the head, this is what was happening with the men. The women was just following the men. Exactly. These men were into whore. So if you start taking this literal as attack, and you look at carnal before spiritual, spiritual is always first, and then it's born. So you have to look at it as like, it's you that's causing me to do all this because I'm following you. And the Most High said, the man is the bride, and then is woman. So we have to understand that if you want it like, we have to be the perfect wife to Christ, me. If we looking for that, and then when you uh, present that to them and you follow that, if they not pleased to dwell with that, give them a right in the divorce and let them go. Don't force nobody to be with you. Right. 